you today? Good. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. How are things at home? Well, it's it's uh, Bombay. The the madness is not around. We are all sitting locked down in our homes. I think it's better off for you, far off from your farmhouse. That's the place you should be in at a time like this. So we are cooped up in our apartments. No sunlight. Try to get some sunlight. Yeah. Not as yeah, much I'm as sure. we should be getting. I'm sure I really am counting my blessings and it does help to be out in the nature. But I must tell you that there is back breaking and a whole lot of work to be done, I guess. Uh, you know, well, you can imagine, uh, well, you know, the things that need need to be taken care of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we have, so, we have also, we have, we've lost our staff. They had to go back uh, and, you know, they were all fearing for their families. So yes, we had to leave. Everyone, so everyone is gone, and there are these things oh, wow. to take for granted. And now we're doing all the work. Uh, Parveen is doing 70% wow. of it. I'm, <laughs> uh, I make more of a mess, so I'm doing like 20%, 20%. I am not surprised at all that Parveen is taking charge of all of this, yeah. uh, but I'm also certain that you're being there in every way that you can. Uh, and yes, the staff issue has been a very big one because like you rightly said, we take it for granted, right? I mean, and, and of course, mm. COVID times have taught us a lot. Um, and that's what I want to talk to you about. I, you know, for a long time, I've been feeling that, um, you know, nobody's really talking to dads about their experience. Um, women kind of find a way to share and, and express and, you know, put their points forward. But I really want a dad's perspective on, you know, number one, the whole COVID scare and number two, how life has been for you during the lockdown. Well, you know, these are unprecedented times, extremely uncertain. I mean, come to think of it, two months ago, three months ago, we were going about our daily lives. Uh, um, there was work going out. We had gone mm -hmm. for our New Year holidays, and now mm -hmm. we're cooped up in our homes. Um, there is no end goal here. There is no end date in sight. We yeah. don't know how long this is going to go on, and that is frightening because I think we all have, we all want to have a sense of control of our lives. Um, and when something like this happens, it kind of shatters our illusion of control. Yeah. And Everyone has had that in doses in their life, but nothing like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know when there are incidences in our life that are traumatic or, you know, testing obstacles, you know that if you're resilient, you will get over these obstacles and you will move yeah. on and there'll be better days. I know there will be better days now after this. I, I know there's a silver lining here, but, you know, the fear is, uh, I hope this doesn't go on for very long. Because, uh, you know, the situation with the cases that are coming in yesterday was the, the, the single day highest spike. Um, every day, the, the numbers are surmounting. And yes. I don't know really we, we have any concrete plan to get through this. And I think as an individual, as um, a man, um, you know, work has stopped. It's come mm. to a grinding halt. Yeah. Uh, being part of an industry which is all about com community viewing. You know, you know, in theaters, uh, we don't know when the audience is going to come back. We don't know how we're going to get down to shooting films. Hmm. Uh, and I'm sure that's uh, the kind of situation in most professions, unless hmm. you're an essential commodities, which are doing exceptionally well in these times also. I'm sure you're going through a very different time. Uh, it's the, the, the anxiety levels are high. I'm sure Church Hindu is also. So uh, it is unnerving. But I try to look at the positive in this. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I know we will in, emerge stronger through this. We yes, will. Uh, we, we're getting. I'm getting time to spend with my family. The kind of time I've not got for, for the longest. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how many months or years because you know I'm constantly shooting. I'm traveling. Yeah. And spending time with Ayan, uh, with Parveen, uh, with my dad. It's yeah. uh, it's special. I mean, we. It's it's. The families come together as a unit like never before. No one's running the rat race. Um, yeah. and, and it's quality time with the family. And it's a different yeah. kind of time. I think that, that in itself is uh, positive. So I, yeah. I, I like to change the narrative for myself. I don't yeah. like to keep a, a gloomy, grim narrative in a situation. I mean, there's... You can view a situation uh, either way. Uh, I look at... It, it in 
from a place of hope because I feel our industry, mm-hmm. the other industries will recoup. I don't know how yes. long it's going to take, but uh, it will eventually. Absolutely. Uh, Imran, you're an Indian film, Bollywood hero, Bollywood never stops and uh, uh, people will never stop loving you. But I think what you really uh, brought forth is such a significant point that there are a few things that we take granted that men will do in our lives. One, they'll fight for us, they'll protect uh, us, they'll face problems head on and also the whole work angle, you know. Uh, of course, there are women who also work and uh, contribute to, uh, you know, the financial situation at home. But this is something that is kind of ingrained in us, uh, you know, sociologically. And those are some of the pressures that men must be feeling so much more at this time. And th- this is a time where you just can't do anything to protect your family, uh-huh. you know from an external trigger or stressor. This is just something like you said, out of your control and that's extremely unnerving. So I do, I really yeah. do empathize with that. Um, you know, also, also I think uh, socially and culturally, it's acceptable in a way for a woman to kind of express a gamut of emotions, hmm. uh, mainly fear, if it is anxiety, if it's sadness, um, love for that matter. Mm-hmm. Men generally aren't as expressive and that therein lies a certain problem because we kind of uh, kind of push those feelings away or yeah. we, in, in, in a state of anxiety or fear, we want to be left alone. We don't really talk about it because we feel it's not macho to kind yeah. of uh, talk about it. And yeah. I think it's very important in these times to kind of let and allow ourselves to be vulnerable. Uh, yeah. In those vulnerabilities, you there's a new lesson to be learned, and I'm sure a new man much from this. I mean, if if you view it in a, in a certain way, you have. To, I, I mean, there are places of in, in anxiety where I I like I, I don't like to share that, but you yeah. know I know when things are unsurmountable, it's very important to kind of uh, you know offload that to kind of converse yeah. with friends or wife with uh, with Payan for that matter with uh, yeah. my dad and I think that is therapeutic uh, in that many is ways. So, I think that is so amazing, that. so amazing and wonderful coming from you and I think that's like a huge value add for uh, anybody who's listening out there that men can be vulnerable too and they can you know they need uh, they may need uh, to express even though I feel physiologically uh, you know, the part in the brain that's responsible for expression is uh, yeah. uh, underused. It's it's a malfunction would you say weaker? <laughs> so there are some fundamental differences in the way we deal with stress. Yeah, yeah. if you say so, I didn't say that. Um, but, uh, you know, coming to the next thing that I wanted to ask you is that how has uh, this whole COVID experience uh, changed your mindset. What are the things that you're going to do differently? Um, of course, you know, maintaining social distance from your heroines and, uh, yeah. you know, not, <laughs> not, not kissing them. I don't know how that's but possible in my what films. What else are you going to do? I don't know how that's possible in my films. But <laughs> uh, I'll, I don't know. You know, this is, this is a roadmap that the industry is trying to kind of wrap their heads around. There is no roadmap, actually. Yeah. Uh, you have industries where you can uh, reduce the staff. We can do that also with our industry. Yeah. We can yeah. probably bring yeah. down. And and the irony is right now is a time where you actually have to give employment to more people, you know, yeah. with the kind of employment that's out there. And mm-hmm. we'll have to undercut our staff, which is possible. I mean, it's yeah. going to be difficult because uh, yeah. the Indian film crew is... Uh, is not as disciplined as it should be, but I think mm. this will really uh, have to be done as need of the hour. Yeah. Uh, sanitization, uh, the studios, uh, the, the way things are kept have to be extremely clean and proper yeah. and someone has to supervise that. So production companies are trying to kind of restructure that. But yeah. how do actors who are exposed in the situation interact in scenes? Yeah. Uh, how how do you have a close proximity to uh, other uh, actors in a scene and uh, you know not endanger their lives or your own life? Yeah. Um, there will have to be daily tests done. Uh, I, I'm guessing. 
Uh, one, one, uh, I guess, um, someone said that, you know, the entire crew will have to be taken off, flown down to a location, quarantined, tested, and the film will be of a different nature. You can't yeah. really have a film with multiple locations because then it becomes extremely difficult. So yeah. these are the things that we're trying to kind of wrap our heads around and uh, let's see, let's see how, how fast First, let's get out of this. Uh, yes. I hope the lockdown, I mean, you know the lockdown is going to extend now. Just hoping, hoping the, the curve will flatten and uh, some positive will come out of this. That's true. I mean, there is a lot of adapting that needs to be done. And uh, like you rightly said, I mean, in your industry, it's very people intensive. It's very cash intensive. It's very, you know, yeah. uh, there are at so many levels, you will have to work through this one. But like I said, uh, you know, with Bollywood and cricket, India will never let you down. So there's definitely, um, there's definitely hope over there. Um, now, Imran, you know, for, according to me, with, with what I know of, what you and Parveen have experienced in terms of uh, Ayan's health. I feel you are one of the strongest dads out there. And I think what you both have experienced, you both come out so strong as a family. Now, during this COVID scare, there are a lot of dads and moms, um, you know, so, so scared for their children and their health. So what are your two bits to them? What would you like to tell them? Uh, you know, in terms of dealing with their anxiety and fears? I think first of all, rest assured, uh, if anyone's got it good in these times, it's the kids because their immunities are the best. Yeah. Um, but having said that, they could be carriers of the disease where you have to be responsible not only for your own health, but also the health of others. And in a situation like this, I mean, facing, you know, back-to-back, catastrophic events in my life six years back with Ayan, with my mom, she got cancer also. And um, it is going back to the point of, first of all, on an emotional and psychological level, you have to be prepared for the unknown here. Um, it shatters a certain way of life, an illusion that you had that things function in a certain way. And, you know, there's an old saying that life happens when you're making other plans. And that's exactly what's happened right now. Uh, you have to be okay with it. You have to be okay with the new normal. Um, at the same time, you have to explain to your kids. Uh, they're very smart. I think kids are extremely perceptive. You can't talk down to them. You have to show it from their point of view. Uh, they're intelligent enough to know and be responsible. But they need to be told again and again because there's certain energy that they have. They live in the moment. They dart off at the next thing. So you have to reiterate what you're telling them. And I tell Ayan this in the situation that, you know, right now it's your health and also the health of others. Uh, you have to look after your community, you have to look after the elders in the house, you have to look after your grandfather, your grandmother, because they are the most at risk in a situation like this. Uh, the, you know, anyone whose immunity is compromised is most at risk. So you have to understand that there is social distancing, there has to be... Um, certain cleanliness you have to wash your hands and i think he is he's uh, he's pretty good with it uh, because he's faced this uh, i think he grew up at the age of four when he faced uh, in new york four year old he was three years ten months and he got cancer and he battled it for five years i think he grew up i think it's a part of his brain that is very adapted to a situation of the unknown of uh, understanding and knowing that there's a responsibility that he has uh, towards to himself, to, 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 to the others. He was the strongest through it, yeah. through his uh, cancer battle. And I think we all as a family learned from that, from him. Uh, we learned a lot. And I changed my attitude by looking at his attitude. Wow. So he is, I think, the person who is extremely uh, strong-minded, I think the, the most in the family. And um, yeah, I think as, as days go by, he, he he learns. It's not that he doesn't have his uh, frustrating uh, moments. I mean, he, he's, th there's a frustration that he feels because he's not going down to play. Uh, mm -hmm. There are, you know, the, you know, he used to play with kids uh, below the building. I mean, he obviously he socializes in, in, in school and that has completely been cut off. And now he's only facing a screen and homeschool is going on. Uh, you know, schooling can't be done like that, but this is the new norm right now till, till it kind of restructures. 
Um, so it's it's important to kind of always um, reiterate that and tell your yeah. kids, and you know, there will be moments which will they they you know I'm difficult at times. Uh, he's difficult at times, but the thing is, you have to understand that moods just completely yeah. go haywire in a situation uh, of this nature. This is something I've never faced before. Yeah, that's so important and valuable that we need to talk to our kids. We need to inform them. We need to talk to them about their responsibility, not only towards their own health, but also uh, other people's health. And I think what yeah. I also heard you say in different ways is, um, you know, that resilience only comes, we get a chance to be resilient only when we are faced with difficulties and uh, something that we can't control. And if we yeah. can uh, show that to our kids in one way or the other, I think we can prepare them um, yes. for what's to come. And that's really connected to what I was going to ask you next. I think moms and dads are so worried uh, about how to prepare our kids for the new world. I think our generation, you know, has sort of kind of managed it. Some are, well, some are finding it a little bit harder to cope with this, but we're enduring it, right? And we're working on adapting. Uh, we don't know uh, what these kids are going to grow up with. Is it going to be a new world of pandemics? Is it going to be, you know, what is going to happen? And is this going to be their new normal? So what are some of the things that you're doing at home, you know, uh, with Ayan, talking to him about, which you feel will prepare him for what's to come? Yeah, you know, one thing that we've always tried to stay clear of is what is facing us at you know, throughout the day, which is the screen. Uh, we were limiting screen time and now he's only stuck in front of the screen because that's the only way he can do his homeschooling. Yeah. Communication, uh, I don't know if it's changed forever, yeah. but it definitely has changed for a long time. I speak to a lot of people from, you know, other avenues of life and they feel like, you know, this is great. You don't have to meet in person. I don't need to travel down and get stuck in traffic. You know, you know, come on Zoom and we can have a, constructive meeting and I think kids now are being programmed uh, to do yeah. that it's a very different future it's going to change our tastes um, forever and I think kids are seeing that firsthand at the age of 10 but I think this comes with a cost there's a price to pay here uh, because there is no substitute for a face-to-face -face interaction an okay. interaction where you are there in, in facing each other in flesh and blood you, um, that's what social media does. It, in a way, has alienated people for, for so long. And now this has come forth. I think, uh, I don't know if loneliness will become more of a part of our lives in the future. If you get used to this, uh, that is a fear. And um, how people in situations like this with, you know, I mean, there are, I'm sure, kids that, that face uh, issues, you know, where... Um, not just kids, I mean, adult, I mean, depression is another thing that is a, a very prevalent problem uh, across the world and it yeah. just kind of is surmounting right now in this situation like this. Yeah. Uh, but I don't have the answers. I, I, I don't be the parent who will say that I know I figured it all out for Ayan because right now he's doing a few things that we felt that he shouldn't be doing. And the things that we I mean, he can't really control beyond a point to be sitting at home. I mean, first of all, if there's one thing that's game time. He's playing video games, but we limited it to like once a week. Yeah. But beyond wow. that, sitting at home, he has nothing to do. Uh, what we are doing with him, and I think the fear actually started yesterday when we heard that the homeschooling has uh, come to an end. So now we have 14 waiting hours where we have to set aside a regime of what to be, what is to be done. I think we'll set aside many goals for him through the day. A very good thing is that he loves reading which is mm -hmm. fantastic. Uh, we, we try to take him up, uh, you know, the terrace for um, sunlight, which is extremely important because I was reading some articles. Um, there's a huge, there's a correlation between vitamin D and uh, mortality rates in some countries, a study that they've done. And it's, it's such a catch 22. I mean, we are forced into this lockdown away from sunlight, which could be the very thing that would save our lives. So it's very important, and I put a tweet out that day. I mean, you don't, you don't have to go out. You can just stand at your windows and try and soak in the sun once in a while. And also, I think another uh, 
big advice for the parents is uh, is uh, immunity for your kids and by immunity i would say completely not medication uh, unless it's it is needed immunity comes from good food uh, and throwing out the junk from your diet and that does tremendous amounts for your immunity and there's a doctor a friend of mine in the states who said that you know all this is fine the face masks uh, cleaning your hands is is fine but what is really important what people are not really talking about is the root problem of yeah. people who are immunocompromised that yeah. covid is trying to get, that covid is getting the best of uh, people are succumbing to this disease because their immunity is low yeah. and you can only get your immunity up there by things like a great diet by exercise uh, you know activity through the day and also sunlight and also good thoughts uh, you know you have good to thoughts, add that best, you're talking best, to a psychologist yeah. you know yeah. i think that you're so right that good food sunlight you know being connected with nature uh, exercise all of these are so significant uh, but yeah. i also need to add over here that um, you know the ra- rational thinking uh, being mindful being aware uh is so important in terms of an immunity booster because the minute you get anxious the minute you get fearful the minute you take you know internalize stress your immunity comes down yeah. you know just because of cortisol and other stress hormones so it's so important for all of us to keep that in mind and you also um spoke uh, you know about something very significant which is all of us adapting to screens you know i have a slightly positive take on this we grew up with kids all around we grew up playing we grew up you know our summer holidays were doing absolutely nothing um but playing with the neighborhood kids uh and that is why we learned that company is a happy childhood um being with someone face to face is necessary for a connect and i'm just being hopeful that maybe our kids will still be able to connect via screens with their f- friends because this is what they will grow up with and um you know they absolutely may be able to make some great memories with their uh, friends connecting with them virtually because they just wouldn't have yeah. known another way um you are right that this is going to be uh, the way forward for them in terms of learning and communication and it's important for our generation and the ones earlier to quickly adapt to this because so long as we keep resisting it we might be standing in the way yeah. of our kids learning sure. sure yeah yeah um, i think also as far as stress levels go um there is uh, you know i used to work myself up in the beginning of the lockdown because i constantly wanted to stay connected with what's going out there yeah going on out there and um the news is something that is it can be such a big dent in the way you think about things so now i've limited my time uh i the, the first of the news is not on my house uh yeah. the, the kids react very differently to news channels and they don't they can't comprehend a, a single image of something played over and over again they can't really comprehend that yeah. um and 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 that kind of is something that is amplified in their minds at yeah. the same time even structuring the narrative uh to them not sugar coating it Yeah. But at the same time, not making it grim and dark and yes, scary. Yes. Yes. Something and you not, learn from and, yeah. of and cancer. And not throwing it in your face, right. like in no. I was just saying, and not throwing it in your face, like in big red bold letters with the picture. Yeah. You know, you're right. Kids remember templates. Kids rem- have you know they remember visuals and yeah. the big banging sound of you know the soundtrack behind sometimes in new you know i don't know if that's a right word uh, i'm not an expert on this one but you're so right the way news is being reported so what do you think can be done about this why is the narrative not changing there uh, the news channel i mean it's 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 as simple as that i mean um it's the more shocking the more uh, sensational it is the more it sells and uh, you know there's there's a thing that i'd heard once that you know if you don't read the news you're not informed but sometimes when you read the news or hear or see the news you are misinformed <laughs> so i you know it's very sad but then it's not like the the aren't credible channel a lot of them is and uh, and for an effect yeah um so that becomes a very important part to understand that 
and yeah. i think uh, you know in in the case of even ayan um when he went through cancer uh we lied to him we were kind of sugar coating him uh, sugar coating the story and telling him that you know um we were going for a summer holiday to toronto because he had just got a surgery and his first chemotherapy in mumbai and then when he landed in uh, toronto and we had to do another operation there his he got so flustered um the doctors they said you know that you know you have to tell it to your kid the way it is i mean you obviously don't uh, uh, don't make it grim why don't you mm. just put a put across uh, a positive narrative but you have to tell him what he is fighting this medication that will help him get over it and it's exactly what we have to do for uh, a situation like covid uh they're going to hear it, hear about it from someone else and the chances are that information will be amplified or would be inaccurate so you'd rather share it in a very accurate yeah. way with them and uh, have a sane conversation with them and inform them from time to time and it's good i mean you know it's okay to tell your your, your kids you don't know because we don't know we pretend to be the parents who have all the solutions but the fact is that we don't know and that is exactly what i was saying that putting out your vulnerabilities out there parents try to be very smart and tell them that you know they they, they got their act together and this thing will you know curb yeah. down after lockdown has end the fact is it won't so you have to be slightly realistic but add a positive narrative to it you are so right you know it's so important to inform kids and we rather tell them than them get curious and look up online or watch the news so i guess that's uh, it, yeah. it you know we are the most compassionate uh, people who can bear uh, difficult news to them um, you know i have yeah. kind of saved the best for the last i think um, covid the covid experience has made us appreciate um, our strengths our loved ones um uh, you know it's not like we did it earlier but it's brought to our conscious um you know how uh, grateful we need to be for the people who are around us and naturally you know where this discussion is going i'm taking it to parveen who's been such a strength for you uh, you know in your life and let me tell you this that she is one of the most angelic people i know like forget a wicked yeah. bone there's not a wicked cell in that girl's uh, body and you know so yeah. simple and innocent yet so strong and principled i i hugely admire her yeah. uh if you yes. had to express gratitude to her you know um for one thing i'll make it easy for you for one thing what would it be uh you know just she's been a pillar of strength throughout um and you know you you see a person's true character when they face adversity and uh, with ayan's health uh, she was really a pillar of strength for the entire thing i mean i had to come back because i had work commitments but she was there alone and she kind of uh, sorted everything out uh, herself and she was extremely strong and extremely resilient for the entire thing and and it's very tough it's not easy um and you know even right now uh, she's uh, she's got a certain world view that is very different which is very calm yeah with the calm with, there is a bit of anger also i keep i keep uh, you know joking around that you know she first of all she she does reiki and she meditates and i after that i you know i start meditating a bit but with her is that sometimes i don't know if you've seen this part of her that she flies off and gets stressed and she flies off the handle right after the meditation if there's something off about some and i keep telling her that you know you have to take the meditation meditation through uh into your life yeah. in through that working day yeah or whatever you're doing so that you can yeah. stay calm but she is probably the calmest person that uh i have met and uh, a big support uh, yeah and you're grateful to her for that <laughs> i am grateful to her for that and uh, yeah for everything right now i mean you know again uh, the kind of work that she's putting in with ayan yeah. i feel like a slob at home uh, because the home schooling and the 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 tasks that are on her head i feel extremely lazy because she's taken up everything uh, on her shoulders and she's doing everything she gets up at 
like 7, 7.30 in the morning. And, you know, his homeschooling, the homework, um, the chores at home, everything is done by her. And it's, uh, it's commendable. Yeah. Gratitude. Yeah. I, I do agree uh, that she is such a pillar of strength and uh, so hardworking, so amazing. And uh, um, I'm so glad that, you know, we spoke about expressing gratitude because that is one thing that I've been talking about. It is very important for everyone to express gratitude in their relationships because that is such a game changer. While, you know, the lockdown has kind of kept us up there are lots of relationship issues people are talking about it everywhere but i feel no you know just expressing gratitude for what the other person is doing for us is a huge game changer and i'm so glad that you are mindful of it uh, on that lovely note i want to wish you guys um, all of the best wishes in the world lots of love to ayan and parveen you guys take care stay safe thanks a ton for doing this Thanks so much, Imran.